This is your day one. You just downloaded Resolve. You're in the color page. What to do? I'm going to give you the ultimate node tree to make really pretty images. So if you're stoked, then do me a favor, smash the like button so we can reach more people. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified about future content. Let's jump in. All right, so now we're inside Resolve. And remember, the idea is to build the perfect node tree for a beginner. All right, so this is for people that downloaded Resolve yesterday and today they want to make a banger look. How can we do it in the simplest, fastest, easiest way possible? Let's do it. I'm going to build a five node node tree. I'm going to take this up top and I'm going to pull this down. Why am I doing that? So you know that let's not be bothered by these two. OK, these are just in and out. Let's just call them such in and out. We're going to use a tool called color space transform. It's an OFX inside resolve. So let's drop that on. And once we do, nothing changes. We need to know some information about our camera. So this footage came from Sony A7S III shot in s Log 3. So we're going to go ahead and select those settings. So it's going to be Sony S Gamma 3 Cine for color space. And then for Gamma, it's going to be s Log 3. So it looks like that. Don't worry about it. We're going to work in DaVinci White Gamut. This is my flavor of choice when it comes to working color space. It just gives you the most latitude and works perfectly with any sort of footage. On the tail end, we're going to drop the color space transform again. And here we're just going to tell it, hey, take DaVinci White Gamut for input and DaVinci Intermediates. And then we're going to say export it to Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. That's the output that we want. So now it's properly converted from log to Rec. 709. And at that point, my first node here is going to be primaries. That's where I'm going to do basic adjustments. And here what I'm going to use is an HDR palette or high dynamic range color wheels right here. And then in here, all I want to do is like, I feel like if you look at my scopes, it's a little bit more on the red side. So look at this colorized waveform and how everything is just looking hella red. I want to pull that out. So I'm just going to go in my global offset and I'm going to pull that down a little bit and I'm just going to add a little bit warmth in there. Okay. So even something like that, if I do before and after, it's looking a lot better. Now, one of the things that I want to show you, let's go back here so you can see is look at my vector scope and how the red is clipping. It's it's too much, right? So even before our change, the red is going to be clipping. So let me just show you. Let's turn off the change that we made. You can see the red is still clipping. So how do we control that? We control that by going into our out. And what we want to do here is we want to turn on gamut mapping method to saturation compression. And as soon as we do that, look at like what's happening. OK, so now our red is being controlled, but we can control it a little bit more going under our saturation max. And what we can do is like, look at what I'm doing. OK, so I'm just looking at my image and I just want to pull it back even a little bit more. Right. So I'm going to undo that first. I'm looking at my yellows. I'm looking at my reds and I want to go back in there and I want to just kind of pull it back and then kind of give it some color and I want to keep it somewhere around here. OK, so this is very nice if I were to turn that off and you can look at my vector scope and then turn it on where all the colors are. I like it where everything is sitting. Now I'm going to go and set my primaries on and this is where we are. So for our primaries, that's the only adjustment we're going to make. OK, so we just pulled some of that red out. And it, even if you look at my colorized waveform, everything is looking nice and juicy and in that teal and orange world without even fudging the image too much. This is just we're playing with the natural colors and we're just shifting a few things. OK, so I'm happy where the skin tones are and how everything is looking at this point. I'm going to go here. I'm going to call this look. OK, and then here what I want to do is I want to start with my custom curve. So I'm going to pop this open. And I'm just going to bring this up a little bit like such. I want to compress my shadows and highlights. That's what I want to do here. And I'm going to bring my highlights down quite a bit. And then I'm going to create another point right here and I'm going to pull it down something like that. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. I'm going to create another point and I still want to keep my highlights pretty pushed like that. And then I'm going to create another point right here and I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Not too crazy, something like that. And then what do we want to do here? We can just leave that there. OK, and if we were to now do on and off and look at it like, yes, we're really pulling the image down quite a bit. Right. But what you need to look at is our main focus is our hero. OK, our girl. 
and we want her to look perfect. So here her skin was looking pretty thin, right? Like the colors don't belong. They don't really wrap around. And if I do after, you can see that now everything is wrapping around and looking a lot better, okay? Without losing too much information, we can still make out what's happening in the background, okay? But if we do want a little bit more information in the background, we can click right here and we can start pulling that up a little bit, right? Like, so we can just do something like that. And now we're getting a little bit of that information back. So we're looking pretty good here. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go back to this and I'm happy with what's happening here. Another thing that I wanna do is this is where I wanna create a little bit of like a color, right? So I wanna create a little bit of a look. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under my hue versus hue and I'm gonna take my yellows and I'm gonna swing them up a little bit and just keep your focus right here. If I do before and if I do after, you see like I'm just adding a little bit of more of like warmer tones in the yellows and that just looks a lot nicer. So I'm just gonna leave them there. And then what I wanna do is I just wanna go to my tried and tested um, RGB mixer and I wanna play around with it a little bit. I'm gonna say it out loud what's going on so then it kind of makes sense because otherwise it's gonna be very, very confusing. So when I'm looking at my image, there's just still a lot of magenta in her skin tones and I wanna, I wanna kind of go in like the warm world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in my blue channel. I'm gonna take the red, which is the red in the skin, and I'm gonna subtract some blue in that, okay? So like, look at what's happening, okay? So it's starting to add like a lot of warmth in the skin tone. Obviously this is going too far, so I'm just like looking at her hand right here, and I wanna keep pulling back up, pulling back up to something like this. So now if I do before and after, you can see how pink it was before, right? So I'm kind of liking what I'm doing, right? And it, and the yellows become really nice and gold color-like, right? So like, I like that a lot. Now, what we can do is uh, in my red channel, and I'm gonna take the blues, and I'm just going to drop them to kind of create, bring some of the teal in the skin tones, right? So like, we're going for cooler tones. So now if you look at this, like, it started to give us like that film tealish tones that we get with like a film negative, right? So if I just like go back here and then do before and then after and then come in and like show you, like you're starting to see it's looking pretty good, right? Another thing that we can do is we can go in the uh, red channel again and take my blues and I can just crank them up a little bit. So we still bring some of the warmth out. I'm just looking at her lips and I'm looking at her skin tone and I'm bringing some of that back in. So guys, this is like a very confusing tool, but I wanted to kind of talk you through like what I'm doing so you know that what it's capable of. And it, the results that you can get with RGB mixer, it's near impossible to get it any other way, especially with like your lift gamma gain as well. And we always use lift gamma gain, so I wanted to show you something different. And speaking of, if you do want to take your color grading to the next level, you still have about day and a half to save $400 off my masterclass. This is our biggest sale for 4th of July. And let's see what's inside FCM. You're getting 30 plus hours of on-demand content that you can watch whenever you like. We do weekly competitions where you get tailor-made feedback. And a lot of our members are working with tier one brands such as Nikon, Porsche, Company 3, DJI, F1, and the list goes on. I'm so confident about this course that I'm throwing in a 30 day money back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you get your money back. So this is a win-win scenario. Link is gonna be up top and in the description. Go ahead, check it out, sign up before the sale ends. Let's get back to the video. And then at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click right here and call this window. And you always wanna have like at least one uh, node for windows. And if you wanna have multiple nodes, you can just do parallel and keep building nodes right here. Uh, but for this one, we're just gonna go and create an oval like this. And then I'm just gonna raise it up like that. And I'm gonna pull it out like this and just kind of cover her face right here, make it a little bit bigger like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just feather it out to 26-ish, invert it by clicking on this button right here. But let's just say we wanna do the opposite effect. So I wanna go in my lift and I wanna raise it up so I can actually see more around her, okay? So I'm just gonna 
go and do that. So I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit, not too much, right? So like, even if I do something like this, like look at like how much more I get to see around her. And it's just like so cinematic. Everything is so cool that you want to see it. So like now we're just picking up on all this little detail, you know, the, the location that they're in, which was like a damn shame that we couldn't see before. So that's all coming in. And that's another example of like how to use vignette. It's not always to go in and pull everything down around our subject. Sometimes we want to emphasize those areas more. So if we were to go to Rec 709, right? So this is log, this is Rec 709 to like what we ended up creating. Like look at how beautiful and film like it is with just the simplest tools that are available in Resolve. If you're just starting out, this is your day one. You cannot beat this node tree. So let's just say you have six different shots in this scene that you're working on. Then what you're going to do is like you're going to copy paste the same grade. You're going to adjust your window depending on where it needs to go. And then in your primaries, you're going to make the adjustments like, OK, is the shot dark? Let's bring it down. Does the shot need to be brighter? Then pull it up. Those are the things that you're going to do in your primaries and you're going to leave your look alone, right? Because you already created the look. So that's the mindset. If you are enjoying this type of content, then please do me a favor. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. Make sure to check out the course. Link is in the description. I hope you join FCM and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.